As we progress towards a more inclusive society, I'm curious about the role that sports plays. How does it affect the perspective that people have of persons with disabilities? How does it affect the way they see themselves? And how do we grow this space so that we can increase participation? Let's find out. To begin my journey, I thought it would be useful to get a broad perspective of the sporting scene for people with disabilities in Singapore. How far have we come and how does it fit into Singapore's Vision 2030 Master Plan, where we consider how sports can serve Singapore in the coming decades? There was no better person to speak to than the President of the Singapore Disability Sports Council, Dr. Teo. How does SDSC and its work build towards a more inclusive society? Our vision is to make sure that everyone with a disability in Singapore, their lives can be transformed through physical activity and sports. When an individual has gone through a developmental sporting program, see themselves as an athlete and would like to represent Singapore, mm -hmm. we want to make sure that we do whatever it takes to facilitate that and to support them in that journey. Over the years, as uh, the attention on disability sports has grown, mm -hmm. what do you feel about the progress? We have come a long ways. <laughs> we have. There is definitely a lot more funding to support um, athletes with dreams and hopes of you know, competing, of representing Singapore. We are now part of the Team Singapore in terms of the Sports Excellence Scholars. So we, our para-athletes now, as long as they meet the criteria, they are considered and treated like any other athlete in Singapore. And that's very important. The interview with Dr. Teo was enlightening, revealing the strategic vision for sports among the differently able in Singapore. However, to grasp how these policies are implemented at the grassroots, particularly for children and young adults, I turned to Karthik, CEO of AWA, to understand their introduction to sports and physical activities. AWA is a 53 years old organization. We were working with families and then we started working with elderly. Then in 1980, we started a special school for multiple disabilities. What are some of the challenges that lie in the road ahead? Things are changing actually. Uh, you know, in the past, uh, the word inclusion was not widely yes. used. What's most important is the society's attitude yeah. towards the person with additional needs so that there is constant engagement and constant uh, acceptance and, and help needed. The whole plan is to, to how we can bring everybody together, move forward. Following my discussion with Karthik, I sought a deeper understanding of the physical aspects of sports for the differently abled. I spoke with Hilmi, a senior physiotherapist who emphasized the importance of encouraging active participation as a key part of his role. He explained how therapy and physical activity often serve as gateways to sparking interest in sports. So why is physical therapy particularly important for people with disabilities? Because of their disability, they don't participate in PE, they don't participate in, let's say, recess. You know, that's where kids get their activities from. Yeah. But for persons with disability, they may not have this opportunity. Yeah. Yeah, so then that's why we will come in, we'll encourage PE participation, we'll encourage more physical activity to build up on their strength, because all this will affect their cognition development, yeah. their physical health. We are working more towards their ability and participation, yeah, rather than trying to you know change them in that sense. Yeah. You know, and then for them to be be involved in the grassroots level yeah. and then to be attending it day and day, they have a sense of community. Yeah. I think that is something that is really important for them. They really love it. Okay, yeah. and, and, and I hear that you actually have a little activity hand cycling mm. for me yes. to try it out. Yes. Shall we try it out? Yep, yeah, sure. Okay, let's, let's go. go. Okay. So Hilmi, this is what people start with because it looks like a racing bike. Yeah, so this is how we get our kids to, yeah. be, to try out the racing bike okay. before we actually bring them over to the associations. Right, so I have to be uh, sort of aware that this has got to do with like your, really your hand-eye coordination. Uh, yep, definitely. Uh, so it's a lot of arm power. So okay. that's why we do a lot of training. Yes. Okay, so then that's where you, uh, for this bike, they have to use their arms to actually yeah. propel themselves. It's okay, their legs. Yeah. do I, uh, do I yep, get on? Go ahead. Okay. Very good, and then just lie Oh, back. lean back. Oh. Yeah. Okay. okay. Straighten out your legs off. Yeah. Very good. Right, you're good to go. Okay. Ready? And go. Okay. Hey, wait, how <coughs> Don't do forget I break? the bricks. Shifting gears from Hilmi's professional insights, I connected with Max, a former AWA client and now a Paralympian. Max shared his personal experiences, reflecting on how sports influences development and his evolving journey in athletics. 
I actually first started horse riding as a form of physiotherapy. Then I was doing riding and sailing together. So I think it's like almost two decades. <laughs> well, how do you think the perception of disability sports has changed amongst Singaporeans? There is now more visibility. They now do a little bit more coverage on the major disability games. People are able to see um, the para-athletes' abilities. It actually helps to raise awareness on disability sports. You know, at this stage, would you say the value of uh, Joseph Schooling's gold medal is equal to Yip Pin Siu's gold medal? Okay, I wish to say that <laughs> the public does perceive it as yeah. the same value. And I, I mean, to me, it would be the same value. We are not really there, there yet. yet, but I think slowly we are getting there. I think through sports, I, I, I've learned about resilience. You know, um, through sports, I've also learned to be tough a little bit and stuff like that. I got to learn to be more independent and be a little bit more confident with myself. We will always be facing failures mm -hmm. all the time. And it's important to, you know, when we fall, it's very important to pick ourselves up and we try again and never give up. When it comes to the support, that you've received from institutions, uh, from sporting associations, or even the government. What are some of the good and some of the bad? Family support is very, very important because most of the time, because as they start out, um, yeah, parents will be playing the role of caregivers, of sport minders and stuff like that. I'm very thankful I also got support from my school. They helped me to balance my studies and my training and competition. I think what can be improved is actually the engagement with the para-athletes to actually find out um, a, a little bit more about what they really need in terms of support for their sporting development. What else can be improved when it comes to support that you know your sport needs or para-sports needs in general? Our athletes, they, they, con they contribute to the nation and they also contribute to nation building. But I think there also needs to be better support to help them transition to life after sports. So that we get to see the athletes being integrated into society. And yeah. I think that is one part that is also very important to uh, look into as well. Embracing the adage that it takes a village, I delved into the family's role in Max's journey by speaking with his father, David. He opened up about their commitment to Max's sporting journey and expressed thoughts on areas that, in his view, still need improvement. As you've witnessed Max grow through so many challenges and uh, successes as well, how do you think sports affects him and his growth? Sports, actually getting to sports, improve and increase the social circle. He finds friends in sports, uh, and not just friends, he feel more confident playing sports. He uh, go through tumble, stumble, the pain, the injury, and he continue. So he learned a lot about being resilient, uh, perseverable through sports, uh, making friends, understanding why the coach sometimes push him harder or sometimes give him praise. And all these are part and parcel of growing up. The positive part about it is that he take failure as a learning lesson. So uh, yeah. We were very happy that he got into sports and that's what sports has given him. Was it difficult for you and for your family as well in terms of the, the support that you had to provide? Oh, sure. I think anybody, not just a person with disability coming to sports, they need a lot of support. They won't be able to do it all alone. You know, there are so many things. Place where he's going to do training is accessible, is inclusive. I retired in 2007 mm -hmm. because I know I can't be working and supporting him in sports, traveling for competition and things like that. So that takes quite a big financial part out of our family uh, finance. I have to plan the time mm. to make sure that when he's going for sports, I am there for him, ensuring that everything is safe. Sports has been uh, very good for my family. They have grown up to be a better person, more tolerant of people, uh, able to take a little bit of crunch here and there. Uh, I think that's important part and parcel of uh, life. Reflecting on the immense dedication of David and his wife towards Max, I recognize the importance of strong support systems for athletes with disabilities. As I wrap up my journey, 
I witnessed the remarkable strides in sports for the differently abled. From Dr. Teo's strategic vision. It's about understanding, it's about empathy, and then to also understand this person is actually not much different from me. The Karthik's groundwork at AWA. No matter what disability they have, and they're not able to participate like their peers, we help them cross the barrier so that they can participate like anybody else. And sports is a great way to help them participate in all the activities. And that gets carried over to the community. And the unwavering support of Max's family. I will encourage those parents, I will encourage those caregivers, or even the para sportsmen. Start. You don't start, you will never know. Each story has been a testament to resilience and progress. Well, any beginner, yeah, just go out there, try it out, have an open mind, and have fun. This exploration isn't just about sports. It's a broader call for inclusivity, highlighting how embracing sports for the differently able paves the way for a more inclusive society. It instills hope, a belief in a future where differences are not just tolerated, they are celebrated. And it reminds me, in our shared aspirations and challenges, we are truly not so different.